Hello and welcome to Newsday on the BBC. I'm Rico Hizon in Singapore. I'm Babita Sharma in London. The headlines. It's 8 in the morning in Singapore. It's 1 in the morning here in London. We're broadcasting to viewers around the world. Welcome to Newsday. Hello again and welcome to the programme. Huge crowds of supporters of the ousted Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi is spending another night on the streets of Cairo, close to where more than 50 of their comrades were killed during clashes with soldiers. Well, the authorities have set up a judicial committee to investigate the killings, which the Muslim Brotherhood called a massacre. The military says it was acting in self-defence. A couple of hours ago, Egypt's interim government set a timetable for parliamentary elections to be held by 2014. From Cairo, here's Quinton Somerville. Quinton Somerville reporting there. Well, the White House says it's still reviewing whether the actions of the Egyptian military amount to a coup, which under U.S. law would automatically block the sending of aid. Our diplomatic correspondent Bridget Kendall considers the increasingly complex challenge facing Egypt's caretaker government. In Turkey, police have fired tear gas and water cannon protesters who tried to defy a closure order and enter an Istanbul park at the centre of protests against Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan's government. Now to the United States, where it's emerged that the pilot of the Asiana plane that crashed at San Francisco airport on Saturday had never landed a Boeing 777 there before. Investigators say the plane was flying significantly below its target speed on approach, and the pilots had to try to abort the landing just seconds before it crashed. Two passengers were killed and dozens were injured. Johnny Diamond has the latest. Canadian police say they have now recovered 13 bodies from the town of Lac Megantic in Quebec, where a runaway fuel train exploded in the early hours of Saturday. The Labour leader Ed Miliband is to propose a major change to the party's relationship with the trade unions in the wake of a bitter row with Unite over the selection of a parliamentary candidate in Falkirk. Bolivia has summoned the ambassadors of France, Spain, Portugal and Italy to explain why their countries blocked a plane carrying President Evo Morales last week. The plane was forced to reroute and land in Austria amid rumours that US fugitive Edward Snowden was on board. Well, the incident has sparked anger and protests in the country's capital. Katerina Mo has the details. Tennis and Andy Murray has continued his victory lap after winning Wimbledon. David Cameron then. Let's see if Andy Murray becomes Sir Murray. That's it from Rico and me. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.